Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today I got a messy bench. Sorry about that, a lot of projects going on. But I wanted to sneak in this project. This is a Class D amplifier. It's capable of 420 watts per side. Well, at least that's what the spec says. So I'm really curious if it can do that. Now, there's two kind of, it's almost like two modules. There's two sides of it. And there are actually two modules. There's a TDA8954 module under each one of these heat sinks. And I mean, this heat sink is a fan. It's a heat sink with a fan on it. So pretty cool. Now, the other thing uh, you can see from there is not only that we have these nice fans mounted right over the top of that module, but each side, as the AC power comes in the top here, then it breaks out into a bridge rectifier right here and a bridge rectifier right on this side. So this is a plus minus rail for this module. And then we have the bridge rectifier and plus minus rail for that module. So pretty cool. It's like two modules in one, except for they share the same AC input. For this test to start off with, I'm gonna, I've am gonna i shown it before. I'm gonna put a plus minus voltage in here and that way I can just simplify the test for now. And if we like it, we'll go ahead and put the, uh, we'll put a transformer on it. Big old bad boy like this. And the power switch, the mister and all that stuff. So as the power comes in to each side and we get the plus minus full drills, it goes through our module underneath the, the heat sink slash fan. And then our output, you know, we go through these uh, nice filters, these nice toroid, uh, this is uh, what they call the red core toroid. So anyway, seems pretty nice. And in here, there's some regulators to run the fans. You can see the little power cables for each fan. Now I'm curious to see if the temperature turns on the fan or if it runs constantly. And as you can see, the back side of the board is bare. It is a nice black paint on each side. So you know what, we'll just go ahead and, you know what, let's just rip this off right now so we can take a closer look without all that reflection. Yeah, I anxious to get back to my Class A amp, but uh, this amp has been looking very interesting. So there we go, there's a cleaner look at it. And these capacitors, by the way, these are 2200 microfarad 63 volt caps. So, yeah, there's a 6600 microfarad per rail, per uh, module. So, yeah, lot, quite a bit of capacitance, I think. And these bridge rectifiers are large, too. So, 420 watts, we'll see. I mean, that's, that's a lot of power. All right. All right. All right, guys, I got the set thing set up here. Uh, it looks pretty messy, a lot of stuff going on, uh, especially with my other experiments kind of wrapped around the bench. But I'll bring the camera over. We're going to look at the setup. We're going to take a closer look at the board. And we're going to check it out. And then what I want to do is I want to see if this scene is worthwhile, if, it's, if it puts out a nice, clean signal. So, All right, so what I want to do is I want to take this transformer, power it up, and see how much power we get out and see how clean it is, see if the signals look good. See if it, you know, looks as good as the spec is. Now, often, you know, amplifiers are rated at 1 watt, 1 kilohertz. It's kind of a standard. This thing's rated at 0.1% distortion, so let's see what it looks like. Uh, sometimes on these Class Ds, you see a lot of high-frequency noise on it. Now, that high frequency, they're, the frequencies are well beyond what you can hear. So, you know, depending on how, how far you, you carry your harmonics out to read, you may or may not use that as part of your THG theme. So, I just want to see if this signal looks like that or if it looks better than some other Class Ds. So, we want to do that. And then if it, if it looks like it's worthwhile, it'll be an interesting test to test with this transform. It's a little smaller transform. It's 160 VA. Then I'll put a bigger transformer on there that, you know, will give us a higher voltage as well, capable of more current. But I want to see 
how well it performs with this transformer first and see if it's even worth you know chasing okay so I've got a power quality meter going into this AC power supply and I got this redfish meter you might not be able to see it in that angle but I'll bring the camera over you'll see all this stuff this redfish it's really cool clamp on meter it tells you your power factor and that it's really cool and power factor is very important uh, for this kind of thing because like say this is 160 VA that doesn't mean you get 160 watts out of it right because the power factor you're gonna have real power you know which is what the amplifier is gonna run on but then you're also gonna have uh, some reactive power you know it could be inductive because you could have inductance often power supplies are capacitive okay because because they see voltage comes in goes through rectifier and hits those caps and those caps make it look uh, like it's a leading power factor and it looks like a capacitive load and so you get this and we'll, we'll talk about that later and we'll, we'll check take some numbers and we'll see what it looks like but what it means is you always end up needing a bigger transformer than the wattage rating that you that you hope to get now this guy's rated at 420 so we really we need this gigantic transformer but 420 watts the way they rate that is that that's 10 percent distortion thd total harmonic distortion that's a lot that's way too much so we don't want to uh, use that 420 watts as our max power but still if we can get you know 100 watts per side uh, pretty clean power i'd be happy uh, that'd still be a lot of power but the way the 420 is rated i looked at the spec and the data sheet calls out for plus minus 41 volts at the module that means that on your on your rail voltages your ripple voltage can't drop below 41 volts has to you know only drop down to say 41 volts so that means your your plus minus voltage has to be like say 45 volts or something like that with no more than you know plus minus uh, 4 volt ripple you can kind of see where I'm going you need a lot of voltage and and a lot of current and I'm not really interested in yet 400 watts per side because I don't want 10 percent distortion so 0.5 percent it's rated at 330 watts okay that's before clipping and that's with the plus minus 41 volts again so that's more believable now I'm not gonna get 41 volts on this I don't think uh, this transformer is 22 volts it'll give me 31 volts so we won't be able to get there but we'll be able to at least exercise this enough to see if it gives us clean signals if it doesn't it's not worth getting a bigger transformer but if it looks good i'll put a bigger transformer on it and we'll test it that way so today what we're going to do look at thd at the one watt one kilohertz and at max power and we're going to find out what that max power is with this transformer okay all right let's do it all right guys so this is a setup let me just show you real quickly uh around the bench here the torado transformer right here powering up the amplifier now my phone is sitting down here and it's tied bluetooth into a power meter i'll show you that in a moment so here i'm going to move this out of the way so you can see underneath and right here this is our input signal coming over coming from our generator here okay so it comes right up in here to this connector right down in here which is kind of hard for you to see and the the left side of the amplifier input is this wire right here i'm just tucking it down there right now so we're only powering up this right side here okay just for now this guy here is going to be looking at the AC input voltage right here at the terminals. I've got a differential probe looking at the DC voltage on the other side of the rectifier on this. And that's this probe and this probe here. So that's all this stuff that's going on right here. Then the, here's a differential probe. There's two probe leads. Kind of hard to see. One of them's under here. And it's looking at the output. The output is these wires here, white wires going to this 8 ohm load. But I have a couple little wires that I just strapped into there 
this black one and this red one so that I could put my uh, differential probe to monitor the output voltage and also my THD meter from the Keithley. Okay, the 2015 THD meter. So we'll look at the THD and we'll look at the output voltage there. And we also have the MixSig uh, current probe. So here, let me just show you that stuff. Okay, we'll be using the MixSig scope and the Pentec differential probe for the input, the MixSig differential probe for the output, and the MixSig current probe for this guy right here. He's tied to that. And they're all going to the scope up here. Right now, I don't have anything on this scope probe. Okay, so I'll show you the scope layout in a moment here. Just kind of give you an overall view of this. And excuse the mess around it. Like I say, I've got a lot of projects going on right now. Okay, let's go through the connections on the transformer. Okay, so the transformer, you can see the black lead and then the orange and red one in the middle and the yellow one here on the end. And so it's coming from... This guy right here, he's 160 VA. That's just for this first test. We've got black, red, and orange in the middle tied together. They're 22 volt output, 3.5 amps. Well, 3.64 amps to be exact. So the red and orange will tie together, and then the yellow will be on the negative side for this setup. Okay, then we have our blue and gray as one of the primary windings. It'll be in parallel with this winding the violent brown since we have uh, you know 115 volts well it actually spec for 115 where the US voltage is really 120 so we'd be using 120 it's 160 VA so it's gonna be a little bit on the small side for what we want we're gonna test this see how it performs and then compare it to the bigger guy okay then we'll compare it to this guy here this bigger uh, transform this larger one it's a 250 VA so I think this one will work out great it's 25 volts 5 amps now that's based on 115 so it'll be a little bit more than 25 volts with 120 okay but we'll start off with the smaller one mostly because I found that one first but thought well heck let's just see how it compares now so I've got the two primary windings in parallel so I've got the blue and purple one tied together going to one of the lines and then the gray and brown tied together going to the other line voltage. So that's my, my two line voltages coming in and going to the parallel windings. Okay, so you can see the toroid outputs for the filtering. We're gonna see how that works. So I'm gonna use the Unity generator as an input. Okay, so let's just go over this. Now the frequency is set for one kilohertz to start off with and offset is zero. Make sure that's zero millivolts. And the amplitude, that's what we're gonna uh, play around with, okay? I'm gonna show you the scope setup and then we're gonna bring up power. Okay guys, you can see the two meters I'm using for power quality, the metric with the power cord coming out and the Redfish current clamp meter or the power meter. And right behind it, you can see the BK Precision AC power supply. Okay, I think what we're gonna do first before I show you the scope setup is I'm gonna bring up power just to see what voltage the, uh, there's an LED down here you might not be able to see, but I'm gonna bring up voltage and we're gonna see when the fans, if they turn on with voltage or let's just make sure it powers up. And you're, you'll be able to watch the voltage here and the amps if there is any and the power factor and here's the wattage okay okay here I come you can see the voltage coming up My, oh wow they kicked on already okay let's take it down again and you can see this scale here where the voltage comes up and there's a scale on the side but here I'm gonna bring it up a little slower that's the AC that beep is AC power spike turning on Okay, right there, wow. So about 27 volts, the fans kicked on. I don't know if they're full speed yet, but... No, now I can hear them increasing in... K 
Okay, there we go. 123 volts at the input. A little bit high. All right. So you can kind of see me moving around the voltage here on the scale. Really nice uh, Bluetooth. I mean, this Redfish meter is pretty darn nice. Okay. Uh, fans are running. I'm going to stop talking so you can listen. They're not too loud, right? They're pretty quiet, actually. And inside a box, I think they'll be even more quiet. Okay, so everything looks like it's running. I don't see very much current, 170 milliamps. So it's running about 14 watts, just running the fans and just the headroom of everything operating right now without putting out any signal. Okay, so I'll power down and let's look at the scope. All right, so uh, here's what we're doing. On channel one, the probe right here, that's the yellow uh, probe. And I have it sitting right here. It's four volts per division. Probably need to go a little bit higher, maybe 10 volts per division. And it's you can see the, it, there's still some voltage that's draining down. It's a capture draining. Okay, then the blue is channel two, and that is our uh, current on our output. That's this probe right here. I'm gonna hit the zero right now, zeroed out. Okay, and then channel three we're not using, and channel four is the differential probe. Let's turn that on. Okay, that's right here in the middle. That will be our output voltage. Okay, so channel one's 10 volts per division right now. Uh, channel 2 is 2 amps per division and channel 4 is 25 volts per division so yeah we'll probably start off something a little smaller than that maybe 10 volts per division okay and I'm at 2 milliseconds per uh, division horizontally okay I think I have a position where you can watch me uh, turn up the amplitude and watch the scope at the same time so let's go ahead and Bring up the input voltage. Okay, there we go. Okay, um, let's go ahead and turn on the output. Okay, so we have a signal. And I'm going to change the trigger to one of those signals down there. There we go, locked in. Okay, let's go ahead and bring it. Oh, by the way, I have measurements here. Channel one right now is showing 63.6 volts. All right, I just moved the camera so that you could see maybe the measurements down here. 63.4 volts where the DC voltage, that's from rail to rail on the bridge rectifier. And we got about 1.6, 1.2 volts ripple. So you can just barely see a little ripple there. And the Output sent about 2.6 volts, 8.2 volts peak to peak, and the current is 320, you know, 7 milliamps or about 1 amp peak to peak. Okay, you'd probably rather get a close up of the screen, I think, than seeing the generator. So I'm just going to move the generator. It's got a reflection on the screen as well. Try to move that out of the way a little bit. And I'm going to increase the signal. Okay, we're at 245 millivolts RMS coming in. And you can see the ripple is picked up to about 2 volts. Okay, let's just go ahead and increase it until we clip. Whoa. Looks like, see see that wavering? The, AC, the voltage on the rails is affecting our signal right there. So let's bring it down. By the way, I'm watching the THD. I can see it's jumped around about 0.5 THD. Right there, it's about 0.1, about 0.19. Yeah, I can smell things heating up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to bring it up just before the THG starts to increase. We're just under, we're right around 2%. Okay. I can see it kind of wavering. I can see the THG, the THG went to 0.25, about 0.23 there. If I drop it there, it's a little bit better. About 0.225. All right, so first I'm going to widen this out so we can just look at the sine wave. The blue is the current. You can see it kind of has a little wobble there and a little wobble here. 
the voltage looks I think cleaner it's just interesting that the current actually has a little bit of a, a wobble in there if I bring down the amplitude maybe I mean of course it starts getting straightened out now here if we drop this down to one watt okay so we need about 2.8 volts RMS right there for one watt that's where they specify the THD being very low. That's just a common thing. Okay, so whoops, went a little bit too low. All right, that's pretty darn close right there. So the THD is 0.03%, which is well within spec. Max is 0.1%, but typical, I think we're running right around typical. THD is often taken at one kilohertz and one watt, and that's where this one's specified. We can blow that signal up so you can look at it better. It looks pretty clean too until I go off the screen. So yeah, that's a one watt. And the voltage of the rails looks very clean as well. All right, so let's go ahead and increase that power again. And you can obviously see the clipping right there. And right there it looks pretty solid. And you can go up a little bit higher. Uh, right about there I see it kind of a little bit of an oscillation. The THG goes up just a little bit there. So right in this range we're under 0.25%. Uh, so let's just look at the numbers down here. Well now here's the... One thing I want to do is I want to look at this AC voltage. You see that ripple there? Okay, that's 120 hertz. And it's 5.4 volts, peak peak. It's 50 volts RMS. So our voltage has dropped, you know, with the load. Which would be expected. So with the other transformer, we should get a little bit more power output. But yeah, that's what this load's giving us right there. I'm just going to go ahead and freeze that and I'll bring this voltage up a little bit so you can see the waveform. Okay, then I'll bring this cursor, one cursor right there. See how it charges right up from this valley to that peak? And let's just drop that to the valley and that's where it discharges in that time. Yeah, that's pretty close. And so that's about 5.2 milliseconds discharging. And you know, that's about what we'd expect. All right, we're, we'll do some math on that, but let's just look at our meter here for a moment. All right guys, let's just uh, see what this is showing. 135 watts input. It's, oh, we're only set at 111 volts. I, sh I should have probably brought that up to 120. That probably would have got us, uh, you know, with the transformer, a higher voltage out here. I think we're going to redo that and I'll bring that up to 120, okay? Okay, so let's see how much higher we can bring this now. We got a little bit higher there. Okay, I'd say right about there probably. I'm going to freeze that. Okay, now I'm going to get a few more cycles in there. Okay, I'll freeze it again. Okay, let's look at our power meter again. All right, so what we see is 159 watts here and 118 volts it dropped just a little bit and 1.57 amps. Okay, VA is 185 VA and let's see. Okay, power factor is 0.855 and we have, uh, looks like 96 VAR down here. And we have 23.3 degrees leading power factor. And this is a view from the app. You can see 159 watts, 118 volts, 1.57 amps, and 0.86 power factor. And when it's running, it's logging the voltage down here. Okay guys, that was pretty interesting. I think the signal looks you know, pretty clean. Uh, it's not too bad. I mean, 
I was seeing 0.25% distortion when I brought the signal up near max power uh, before it started jumping up, you know, and I think it's worth, we're going to put the bigger transformer on and see how much power we can get with that. And we'll also test into 4 ohms and see if this guy can keep up with that, okay? But this transformer is a little bit too small to put the 4 ohms on and get anywhere with it. So I do need to uh, get my bigger transformer. I need to find that bigger transformer, put it on here, and we're going to test 8 ohms and 4 ohms. And, uh, and we'll do that for the next one, okay? And then I'll probably do the third video where I'll show the Bodhi plot, okay? I think we'll see how long the next video takes. Maybe I can do it faster since I've already covered a lot of material on this one. But guys, what I want to do is go over the data with you, okay? So let's just take a look at this data. Okay, try not to crush the circuit back here. Rest on that transformer. <laughs> All right, guys, so here, what I have here is a bunch of stuff. So let's just look at this thing. First, this is a transformer 160 VA, and it's two, two windings at 22 volts AC, and it's each winding is capable of 3.6 amps. So let's look what we did. We had 8 ohms, and we got 32 volts RMS out, and about 3.83 amps out. So we're kind of pushing the limits of this 160 VA transformer. Uh, we got 123 watts out. I mean, that's pretty good. But that was only one channel, right? So once I hit, hook up the other channel, then, you know, for 200 watts, we're well beyond this. I mean, right now, if I had another 160 VA transformer, then it might work great to do both sides. But let's look a little deeper in what we saw. Now, one thing is power usage, the power factor stuff. Okay, real power was 159 watts out. We got 123 watts of the load, but, you know, we, we were getting 159 watts, you know, to the Class D. So you can see it's pretty darn efficient. I mean, at Class A, B amp, we could never get that kind of power with only this kind of transformer. But, you know, we're only losing, like, 123 from 159, like 36 watts to get 123 watts out. That's pretty darn good. The VAR, remember on the... The meters so it showed 95 volt amp reactive var var and it was negative it was leading so that's it's it's a vector math you got a vector pointing down on your axis because you know if it's inductive it'd be pointing up but that's your reactive power up and down your real power is on your real power line here 159 so you do these and then you draw this little box and then draw this guy down here, and this is your VA. And to calculate that, you just take this number, square it, take that number, square it, and then take the square root of that, and it comes out to 185, which is what the meter is telling us, right? So that's pretty cool. Just kind of want to cover this. So it was, you know, this guy, again, 160 VA, but we we're pulling 185. So we were, you know, that's why the voltage rails were dropping a little bit because a little bit too much DC resistance in that transformer and we're dropping. Now for real music versus a sine wave uh, it would be able to do that a lot easier because music's not going to be a continuous power like this. But anyway uh, again we got to hook a second channel right? Okay so then I took the measurements of the on the scope of the rail across the bridge rectifier and we saw 53 volts RMS at this power level. And uh, we had 5.4 volts peak to peak. Now that 53 volts is across plus to minus voltage, right? We're going across the bridge rectifier, which is rail to rail. That's across both cap banks is 53 volts. So half of that would have been, what, 26 and a half, something like that. So we're getting about tw you know 22 volts in. It's supposed to be about 31 but we're getting 26, that's because we're loading it down, we're loading the transformer down. So it dropped down. Uh, we need to pump that voltage up so we get more power. Now that showed a five, the ripple voltage was like this. So it charges up and it discharges. And you saw it charge up pretty fast during half a cycle or whatever. And then it discharges 
you know, and we saw about five milliseconds in in the discharge, you know, ramp. So 5.4 volts peak to peak, five milliseconds. If you use this equation here, important equation in power, I equals C, the change of voltage divided by the change of time. So we go 3.3 millifarads. Okay, now let's calculate that. Each capacitor bank had three uh, 2.2 millifarad caps. So that's 6.6 .6 millifarads. So why do I use 3.3? Because on the plus row, you got 6.6. .6. On the minus row, you got 6.6. .6. But remember, we're measuring from plus to minus. So those caps, those two capacitor banks are in series. So when your caps are in series, they divide, right? So it's 3.3 millifarads equivalent. And we multiply by the 5.4 volts peak to peak. That's this voltage ramp. And it was in five milliseconds about. I'm just kind of, you know, rounding things a little bit. And it came out to about 3.6 amps. Well, we're drawing about 3.8. You see how that works out? So if you're trying to calculate for how much capacitance you need, you just do it in reverse. You, you, you put how much current you're going to pull for whatever power level you have. You put the voltage ripple that you you want to have and and you say put five milliseconds in there it's gonna be about there and then uh, you calculate for C okay anyway since we already had C we did it the other way all right so the THD we did at one watt is one kilohertz was 0.03 percent at max power is about 2.5 percent which you know, I don't, I don't think it's probably that horrible. Um, so what we're going to do, and the waveform, the sine wave, had that little bend to it. That's what was given as the THD. But it wasn't like, you know, I don't think that was as bad as as if it was clipping at the top or if you had high frequency stuff on it. It just kind of was warped a little bit. And I think that's what was causing the THD. Because there's some harmonic in there adding to the one kilohertz that did that. So... What we need to do is take the THG at different frequencies across the band, and we need to do the Bode plot, see what it looks like. But let's get a bigger transform in there next test and redo this, okay? All right, guys. Hey, thanks for watching, and I want to thank my patrons and all the new patrons I got over the holidays. That's awesome. Sorry, but uh, my videos kind of slowed down. Had family in. Yeah, spending time with family over the holidays, so... Uh, gonna be back up cranking out videos again okay so uh, thanks for everybody watching the videos and supporting me and and again thanks for the patrons that's awesome because you guys are gonna see I've acquired a bunch of stuff I gotta do some videos on <laughs> so and that uh, by the way that clamp on power meter that current meter I have that's just the loner redfish gave me to uh, do a review on so we'll do that soon too okay all right, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.